water. It sustains life and enables it to thrive. And thanks to the organization that we are featuring today, tens of thousands of people from Cambodia to Uganda, Ethiopia, and Tanzania all have clean water to drink for years to come. This organization goes to those rough and tumble locations in desperate need. And they serve the people there sincerely and efficiently. Thanks so much for joining us today for this broadcast where real love runs deep. We'll be getting to know Life Water International and Cynthia Khan as she represents an entire team of people who live their lives on the edge of adventure. Cynthia Khan of Life Water International. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Adam. Cynthia, it's great to see you. Um, put everything into perspective now as we have this conversation, as we share the vision of Life Water. Put it into perspective. You guys work where and what do you do? Right. Yeah. So, Life Water International is a Christian clean water and community health organization. We uh, basically, at the heart of it, we're just trying to bring safe water to those in need. So we've identified those countries of greatest need and we're actively serving them. That's Uganda, Ethiopia, Cambodia, and most recently Tanzania. Cynthia, how does Life Water decide where to work? Those are four fantastic locations, great countries, and I'm sure the need there too is great. Um, how do you decide uh, what countries or what areas to focus on? Right. I'm glad you asked that question. It's an important one. Um, so when Life Water is choosing a country to serve, we really look broadly and then get very specific. So we're looking at least developed countries. These are countries designated by the United Nations um, of greatest need. So we start with least developed countries and then our staff within those countries do on the ground research to determine which districts are most in need. So you get this really broad perspective and then you get really detailed on the ground research to figure out what communities can be served best by Life Water's programs. Life Water, obviously the focus uh, is on the safe and sustainable source of water. And um, it's important. I mean, I don't wanna ask a silly question. Mm -hmm. Maybe this sounds a little silly, but why water? Why have you guys chosen to focus on the provision of water? Right. That's a great question. It's not a silly question. I think it's important to consider. So water lays the groundwork for everything. When you give somebody water, you give them access to education. You give women time back in their day who are often journeying two, three, four hours for water. Um, and so you really give people opportunity. So when we talk about bringing safe water, we're talking about really giving life. I recently read a story of one of our beneficiaries and she said, water determines your future. And I couldn't, I couldn't put it better. When you bring water to a village, you're bringing just so much more. Girls like Marine, like we're seeing right now, was walking so far to get unsafe water that was making her sick. And not only was she in danger from the long walk, but wasn't able to go to school. So when Life Water came and partnered with her community, we really saw so many, such an impact well beyond just health. Also, one of the key words as you get to know Life Water International, and you can look them up at lifewater.org. When you do that, you realize that uh, the organization is focused a great deal on the sustainability of the clean water and the safe drinking water. Explain to me what the difference would be between a source maybe that's not sustainable and the kind of uh, sources of sustainable drinking water you guys provide. So if Life Water wanted to, we could go in and build quick, simple water sources that aren't going to last that long, that are maybe made with poor quality materials, it's a cheaper water well. Um, but that's not what we're about. So at Life Water, we're focused on quality. And it's because, like you're talking about, Adam, sustainability 
is is everything. If you bring a community safe water and a year later the water well breaks, well, we think that they deserve better and we think investors deserve better. Um, so at Life Water, what we do is go in, construct a safe water source with locally available materials should the community need a replacement part in a year, as all mechanical things do. Um, and we monitor the well for five years after construction so we can guarantee that that village is drinking safe water and that they're getting abundant water. Uh, particularly in Uganda, our teams, we have a particular team that um, actually works with communities. They're called Waterworks, and they are a maintenance and repair team that will be there in 24 hours if that water well needs any service. So it's pretty groundbreaking. Uh, what we found from other organizations is that a lot of the times very well-meaning, but after a year, it's something like over 20% are broken down. And globally right now, it's estimated that 45% of all safe water sources are not in use. So that's a huge issue. Um, and that's why Life Water is so, so focused and so determined to create water sources that last. During your time there, which I think you've been there for about two years, two years plus? Yeah, two and a half years. During your time there, what have you seen in terms of transformations? If, if you go into a location where they don't have that kind of water source, and yeah. then you compare it to after such is built and set up, what kind of transformation do these villages and these communities go through? Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to try not to get emotional because I have been in communities that don't have safe water and I have <laughs> been in villages that have gone through this vision of a healthy village program that Life Water um, provides and it's night and day. So I'll give an example. I was in Uganda in 2019 with Life Water and was visiting a community that Life Water had just started working in. So they didn't have safe water yet. We walked with a mother and her child on her back to reach a swamp. And right alongside her, cattle were drinking from the water. I mean, it was just something that breaks your heart and for good reason. I think when you view those things, you're really called to action. So, the next day we went to a community that was a healthy village. So that's what Life Water calls a village that's gone through the process of as a safe water source is practicing really critical health practices like hand washing. And there was a mother there, Justine, who was a teacher and her home was clean and she was able to provide for her family in this way because she was no longer walking hours to reach a water source that was making her kids sick. Um, and it was just, it felt brighter and cleaner and happier. I mean, kids have more energy. You can just imagine like children running around laughing and the gardens are flourishing because families have time to invest in their farms and their gardens. Um, and women have more opportunity. It's, it's just, it's just night and day. Um, yeah. And I can personally attest to the transformation there. And the kids, right? I mean, our hearts always go out to the kids, to everybody, right? But especially when you see a, a young child suffering. I mean, it does it does something to you. I know you guys have a special heart and a special focus on the kids. Mm. Yeah, Life Water is a child focused organization. So we work with families, but the thing that pulls at our hearts because we think pulls at the heart of God is children. Um, and one fact that really inspires us is that globally, children under five, the second leading cause of death for them is diarrheal disease. So stay with me here on the specifics. With this illness, it's primarily caused by drinking unsafe water. And how preventable is that? Uh, if you just imagine how many lives are saved every year because a child can simply drink safe water. Um, it's amazing. So yes, Life Water is child focused. We put a lot of effort into 
bringing sustainable, safe water because we know that children under five, the youngest people on the planet are going to benefit the most. You also said you work with the people on the ground, right, who understand the local cultures and the local languages, maybe the specifics and the differences between communities. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about how important that is in the process. So one reason I was really drawn to Life Water, Adam, is that Life Water isn't interested in coming into a community and quote unquote fixing everything and then leaving. There's there's not a, a heroic attribute in that way. We are we are interested in partnering with people who already have the skills, already have the know-how to solve their own most urgent issues. So when we say that we are partnering with communities, all of our staff um, in country are locals. They speak the local language, they know the local culture. Many of our country directors actually grew up in villages without safe water and they were able to go to school, get an education and come back and serve those same communities. So we never assume that we are the experts simply because we went to school. We are always asking questions, listening first, understanding that, for example, we could build a water well here if we think it's the best place. But if there is community tension between these two villages, you know, is that water well going to end up being used? So there's so much that goes into into this work. Um, And I think the best, the reason that we can do it so well is because we really invest in working with locals. So you've been with the organization for two and a half years, ballpark. The uh, organization as a whole, Life Water International, began when and take us back in time as to what got it started. The people that started this, why did they do it? What was their motivation? Great question. Uh, So Life Water was officially founded in 1984, which uh, makes us about 40 years old. However, 20 years prior to that, in 1962, a man named Bill Ash uh, was visiting Mexico and fixing hand pumps at an orphanage. And he was really shaken by what he saw and, and also inspired by the impact that when he fixed those hand pumps, children got safe water and they rejoiced and there was this beauty in it. So Bill started just getting volunteers and going to countries in need and going to Mexico and fixing hand pumps. And it was really just a volunteer basis. Um, However, around 1984, he visited a conference and got over 2000 requests for safe water sources from pastors all over the world. So he said, okay, I have to do something about this. And that's when he founded Life Water. And since then, Life Water's really been kind of taking on that pioneering spirit, right? This sort of like rough and tumble, go to the really hard places where other people can't reach um, and solve their greatest need. So let's talk about some of those places. Uganda, we've talked about that. But you guys also work in Ethiopia, Cambodia, and Tanzania. Are the needs exactly the same, or does it different or differ between those four locations and the communities they're in? Yeah, that's a great question. We've seen in our African uh, programs that the needs are are very similar. Of course, the cultures are different. So, Life Water, um, you know, adjusts and operates based on that. However, in Cambodia, there are massive cultural differences. I think we would be remiss not to mention the Khmer Rouge, uh, which were a militant group. They are responsible for the genocide of millions of, um, uh, two million estimated Cambodians. So what that builds and why that's important now is it creates this culture of really tragic loss, um, distrust amidst community members. And so Life Water's angle in Cambodia has really been about loving deeply and loving first and working with churches. Uh, Cambodia is also, um, I think, 3.2% Christian, so it's very low um, 
in the faith aspect. So Life Water operates with churches first, really coming from this place of love and trust and putting an extra footwork to build trust in communities that have, for very good reason, lost trust. So, the, okay, the, the faith-based aspect of Life Water, right? A lot of the people that follow this platform, The Edge of Adventure, with Adam Asher, um, many who follow uh, are Christians, many are not, right? And I always like when I talk to a guest and I bring somebody on who works for an organization that is faith-based, I like to get into that and sort of understand what the importance is between that uh, connection. So you're faith-based, you could just be out there preaching, mm. right? A lot of people think about faith and Christianity or whatever, and they think that it's about preaching and converting people based on the words you say, right? Um, but you guys are out there serving in a very genuine fashion. Talk to me about that role in the Christian faith. Mm. I love that question. Life Water is committed to serving in word and deed, as you know, my boss likes to say. <laughs> I, we think it's critical. We think that without one, it's hard to have the other, right? Without without words of love to the community members, um, it's they, they're not going to know that we believe in Jesus, that we're loving them because of Jesus. Um, but if we're simply telling them believe in Jesus, that they're saying, I I don't have water. I don't have a single cup of water to make this meal and my children are hungry. We feel like we're not really truly meeting their needs as a whole person. So Life Water operates from this idea that we belong to one another. It's a biblical concept. Um, and, you know, we truly believe that by walking with people, by being the hands and feet of Jesus with an urgent need like the water crisis, people people's eyes are open. I mean, we've seen it. They're hearts are changed, transformed. We serve in a lot of Muslim communities. And over and over again, I particularly hear because I work with our journalists on the ground is that Muslim leaders are saying, Life Water loves us even though we don't have the same religion. And Life Water serves us even though they know that we're worshiping in mosques. And I just think that that's I don't know, a great example of the way that we serve, which is always, you are a child of God made in the image of God. And so I want to meet your needs um, and love you as Jesus would. We are talking today with Cynthia Khan of Life Water International. And you can definitely, and you should definitely look up their organization, get to know them a little bit better. You'll come across them on Instagram at Life Water International. You'll find them on Twitter at LifeWater, and you'll find them on Facebook at LifeWater International. And if you just want a great place to start, go to their website. Very, very well done and very thorough, very thorough. If you want to get to know them and all the places that they're working and the kinds of things they do, you're going to find out more at LifeWater.org. That's LifeWater.org. Okay, you guys, Cynthia, oftentimes have to be creative Talk to me about the need to be creative when you are providing sustainable, clean drinking water and you're, you're, you're going after this, the, the need for drinking water and for proper sanitation. What are some of the ways life water has had to be creative? Yeah, I was talking earlier just about the pioneering spirit that we take from our founder, Bill Ash. Um, and so with that spirit, we're searching for these hard places. And when you're in really hard places where the earth is dry and there's no roads leading in, you find yourself facing some challenges. With life water, um, you know, particularly in one region, I'll give an example, Kakumiro. It's in Uganda. And that's one of those places where over and over again, organizations, us included, have tried to find water in the earth. And it's so challenging. Uh, and I think perhaps not as much creativity as bringing together all of the 
the minds, the the local minds, the expert minds from the US and really solving their issues and going and searching for water in multiple places. So um, I think that's one example of just continuing within a challenge, right? To, um, to serve and to love. As far as creativity, um, one thing I do think of is we're trying to serve the most people the most efficiently with something that's gonna last. That's the bottom line. So in communities in Ethiopia, for example, we will often, if, if two villages are next to one another and there's a natural spring that we can protect uh, to provide safe water for those communities, we'll actually create a piped system to reach from one natural spring way in the mountains miles away, down the mountain to reach two communities uh, with a great need for safe water. So our engineers are amazing is just so talented and experienced um, and they get very creative in solving extremely challenging water problems. So tell me about the kinds of people that can be involved. As I was looking at your website, I, I noticed that you guys have a program that allows families perhaps in the U S or other uh, countries around, around the world with the opportunity to help and maybe they want to get involved and, uh, serve help you guys in some way like maybe as a family mm. um, tell me about some of those programs that you guys have and then um, in general what are some of the ways that you guys can and do need help yeah so the best way to help for anyone is simply to go online when you go to www.lifewater.org, you'll be faced immediately with stories of communities in need. And I encourage you to just read those stories. If you're a family and you want to get your family involved, it's an incredible way to start teaching your children how to be generous, um, how to care for others in need. And we've actually had many families who do that together, look at stories online. Um, and then from there, you can choose to sponsor that project and you'll get updates every few months on the status of that community uh, with photos a lot of the times. Um, if you're a church and you wanna partner with LifeWater, I'd love to connect you with a donor representative. Uh, if you are a corporate organization and you'd like to partner with LifeWater, we have so many opportunities, um, specific funding goals, and we'd love to work with you to figure out exactly what you want to do and what you care most about so that we can find a really perfect match. Um, oh, Adam, we also have, you know, if you're a life group and you wanna give back in some way, you can also partner with Life Water by sponsoring a water project. We've had them do that. Um, yeah. Plenty of ways, plenty of opportunities. <laughs> and tell me too, I wanted to ask about the Well Coffee House. Yeah, so the Well Coffee House is an, uh, amazing just an amazing shop um i believe they have one in indiana and a few in tennessee and nashville um and so they're a great example of how a business can partner with life water they actually give a portion of their profits to safe water projects around the globe particularly life waters um and yeah, their CEO, Mark, I just had a conversation with him and he was telling us all about just how important it is to to serve people well globally and to serve people well locally. And um, and then how his local community has come to support him and partner with him as they seek to solve massive global issues. talking today with Cynthia Khan of Life Water International, getting to know the organization and the heart behind it. Okay, and I'm gonna ask a couple of philosophical questions here. Okay. All right? You can answer them any way you want to. Why does any of this matter? Hmm. I think, personally, I think it matters where we put our energy. I think, when one of us is hurting, if we talk about, you know, the global body of Christ or just those made in God's image or just people, if you just want to say people, I think when one of us is hurting, we are all 
lesser for it, right? Like some part of us is broken. And so when I think about why this matters, why this water access, improved sanitation and hygiene matters, I think it matters because people matter inherently and people inherently have dignity. And so if we can seek as people given resources to give back and to share something that you might say is not yours to begin with, right? These resources that you've been blessed with, um, if you can share those with those who are in a, a really great obvious need, um, I just think the world is a better place for it. And what are we doing if not seeking to make the world a little bit better? So Cynthia, two and a half years with Life Water um, International, that's your amount of time that you've been there. What is, what's your background and what's your role there with Life Water? You're clearly a great communicator. You convey all this very well, but tell us your official title and position there and just enough about your background to understand why you would be drawn to Life Water. Yeah, Adam, I am the communications and content editor at Life Water International. So my primary role is working with our journalists. We have journalists on the ground in every country. These are local people who capture the stories, the impact that our donors are making, the impact that they can make. So I train them. I've gone on multiple trips overseas to do in-person trainings. Um, and then I also just am involved in Life Water's communications. So the blog, the social media, you know, all of our direct mail pieces, marketing stuff, if you will. Um, as far as why I'm inspired and drawn to Life Water, when I really think about it, it is a personal, it's a personal thing. I have two younger sisters. Um, and when I first began learning about Life Water, what really struck me is the fact that there are so many really young girls making these walks for water and, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, there are so many really young girls making these walks for water and those young girls could be my sister, right? And when they're making these walks for water, they're in danger. They're often attacked or uh, abducted and it's just, it's just not okay. So that's why I was drawn to life water, of course, there are so many benefits of safe water that I'm on board with, but this one in particular, I think hit home looking at my own sisters. For some people, it might be looking at their own daughters and saying, I could never stand back and let that happen. So yeah. Whew. No, yes. that's okay. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Listen, it, I think it says a lot about you. You're, you're invested in this. This is something that you're doing because you believe in it. And I, I think that's, it's good. It's good that that's the case because there's a lot of things you could be doing. I'm clearly talking to you, getting to know you here. You're very talented. You've got a lot of skills and great communicator and all that, but you've chosen to work with life water and there's a reason. I mean, there's a reason why, and you believe in it and they are certainly very fortunate to have you on the team. Somebody that is good at what they do, but also very passionate, um, passionate about um, the cause and meeting these needs. You know, a question that I do ask, which I think in a way you've kind of alluded to, but I think I'll go ahead and ask it anyway. Um, through your travels with Life Water, what have you seen that absolutely breaks your heart? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for asking that, Adam. I, I did allude earlier to being in a community in Uganda they didn't have safe water. And we actually returned to that community twice in this trip. And one thing that really broke my heart was, um, I love children. I'm just really drawn to children. And <laughs> which of course, you know, is great working for an organization that's child centric. Um, but anyway, I was holding this baby in my arms and I'm holding this child. The mom has a massive, you know, bottle, massive container of water on her head. So I was like, let me take the baby, we'll walk this long walk in the heat back to your house. And as I'm holding this child, she tells me he has typhoid. And I was heartbroken because typhoid is extremely painful. It's deadly. It's a waterborne illness and it's entirely preventable. And I 
I'm inoculated and I'm fine. I wasn't worried about myself. I was heartbroken to know that I'm face to face with something that is so preventable. And it's just something as simple as money solves it. And how silly that is, right? Like these people just don't have money. And that just seems uh, like something we can all step in to prevent. So that's what breaks my heart, Adam. <laughs> um, really a tearjerker kind of day, but um, you know, I think I think it's inspiring too because it is so preventable. It's not something that we can look at and we can take encouragement knowing that oh, next year when we get there, perhaps that child will be healthy and running around and clean because his village has safe water from life water. What is the thing about all of this that restores your hope? Mm. Yeah. The thing that restores my hope is that I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it hundreds of times. Life Water works in a community for a long time, builds relationships, and lives are changed. And children are healthy, and parents can go to work, and kids can go to school, and it goes on and on. So the thing that inspires me is knowing that the program just works. I mean, 98% of the water sources that Life Water constructs are still functional. They're still providing enough water. And that that fills me with hope. It keeps me going. Um, it makes, I don't know, it just inspires me. So what do you say to the people out there who have the opportunity to do something? Perhaps it's helping you guys. Perhaps it's something totally unrelated, but they have the opportunity to serve somebody else, to, to say, I'm not going to worry most about me right now. I'm going to use my gifts and my talents, and I'm going to serve somebody else. What do you say to that person? Is that going to be a, uh, a life-changing experience? Hmm. I think that we have that opportunity every day. And I'm not perfect. There are so many times when I could spend my money, you know, on this uh, for life water, or I could give it to another organization close to my heart. Um, and I don't, and there are times when I do, but I think when we're faced with that question, the thing that I would encourage people with is just that it's worth it. I mean, if, you know, $20 could get you a nice lunch today, $20 could bring one child safe water. You know what I mean? So it could help bring one child clean water for their whole lives. So you just weigh those things in your palms and, you know, I don't think you could be a martyr for everything, but you have to say, oh my gosh, look at how much impact I can make. And look at the change that my life could bring to this person. So I would encourage people if they're considering it, even if it's not life water, you know, whatever organization is close to you, giving is so fundamental to who we are as children of God, as people made in his image, we're meant to care for one another. So I think when you do it, you not only experience, it's sort of a spiritual experience, but I think, you know, you're better for it. Cynthia, was there a point in time where this changed for you or is this the person you've always been? <laughs> No, I, you know, that's a great question. I, I've always just been really touched by people's stories. And so it makes sense that now I work with story and I see story and I communicate story to others. And so because I've been touched by story my whole life, just growing up, I mean, as a kid, I'm 25 now, but as a kid, I remember just leaning in and leaning closer and opening my ears. And I think when you just, when you do that as a person, you practice listening, you hear so much more and you grow fond of, of things that maybe God is asking you to lean into. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I'm, I think uh, you're making me look really good, Adam, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you, uh, I think you are really good. That's what I think. I think that uh, you're doing a great thing and you are serving 
and you are leading and you're following great leadership. Okay, let's talk about that before we wrap up the program. Yeah. I know that there's this thing that people refer to as servant leadership. I've seen people talk about it and, and you guys talk about it. Mm. What is servant leadership? Yeah. So we have a great CEO. I would reference him as an example. His name is David Levan and he, he always talks about putting other people's wins before his own. So if LifeWater is really thriving one year or for you know one month, we had a lot of donations, for example, he'll put others before him, say, wow, look at how the philanthropy team is doing. And I think this others before you servant heartedness is evident throughout all of the leadership at LifeWater, which is why I feel so honored to work for the organization is not just the work they're doing, but the way that they love and care. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I would explain servant leadership at LifeWater. And and we carry that to our fields, to, to our uh, programs. So as LifeWater looks forward into the future, all of us now, as we record this in, have, have this conversation in fall of 2020, um, it's been a, a challenging year, and it's been a year that's brought a lot of uncertainty. So I understand as you look forward, you can't necessarily know exactly what's around the corner. But what does 2021 hopefully look like for you guys? What are some of the the, the areas of expansion or the projects you want to be working on next year? Right. Yeah, Adam, I think we would be we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that life water has not been impacted by coronavirus. We have greatly. Um, and we have been blessed with such incredible donors and such incredible leadership to navigate us in ways that, you know, losses are, are minimized. But when we look towards 2021, we're calling it emerging strong because right now we're in the process. And I think that there's this natural, this natural process of seeing something kind of, you know, challenged like we are with COVID-19 and then working on what are the ways that we can operate even better, even more efficiently with even more attention to detail and impact. So we're in that process and we're building up and really fortifying all of the systems that we have at LifeWater to emerge much stronger in 2021 and to serve better and reach more and do really quality work. Very well said, Cynthia Khan with Life Water International. As we wrap up the program today here on the Edge of Adventure podcast, Cynthia, what would be the invitation you and Life Water International would make to the people watching or listening to the program? What's the invitation you make? At Life Water, we just want to invite you to step into it with us. This is not easy work. It's not, you know, a walk in the park when we're serving really hard to reach villages in the districts in the countries that are in the greatest need. So at LifeWater, we just want you to walk with us, to step into it in faith and uh, trust that the incredible work that God is doing, that our teams are doing, that other donors are actively doing in the communities we're serving is something that you could be a part of because you can. And every day people say yes, and every day we see transformation. So yeah, we just wanna invite you to join the Life Water family. We would love to have you. Cynthia Khan of Life Water International has been my guest today. Great conversation. We've learned a lot about Life Water International. We've learned a lot about Cynthia, which says a lot about the organization. They, um, they've got a, a great person on staff there. You've done a great job. Absolutely, absolutely convey the information so well. So congrats on, on that. And congratulations, too, on using these God-given skills and talents, right, that we, we all have. It's all different. Everybody's skill is, is different. We have different talents. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm always inspired when I meet somebody like you who's using those talents and skills to serve other people in some way, some capacity. And it it's not always the same, right? It isn't always this way. It takes many different types of people to make an organization work. And it's inspiring to, 
to get to meet the people who are doing just that, serving in the different ways. So again, on behalf of um, uh, LifeWater International and The Edge of Adventure, I want to definitely encourage everybody to check them out. Get to know LifeWater.org. Their website is LifeWater.org, LifeWater.org. You'll find a beautiful account over on Facebook and just search for LifeWater International. You'll find uh, another great account with great storytelling over there on the Instagram account as well, conveying what you guys are doing, why you're doing it, and the impact you're having. And that's at LifeWater International on Instagram and then also on Twitter at LifeWater. So with that, Cynthia, we're going to wrap it up, let everybody uh, get back to their day. I know you're a podcast person, so what a wonderful privilege to have you on the podcast today and appreciate your time so very much. Thank you so much, Adam. It's been a pleasure. Okay, folks. Well, you heard her. It is uh, time for you to step in to this next great adventure and see what it holds. Uh, God bless everybody. We'll talk to you again next time right here on the Edge of Adventure podcast.